My name is Kevin McCracken, and thank you for coming out today. Um, we advertise this as a meeting on addiction, and it pertains to addiction, but it's really about alcohol abuse and drug abuse in our community. And a lot of the people we're going to talk about today are people who have not become addicted yet, but are abusing themselves with drugs and alcohol. But before I get into the program, I wanted Father Mark, who allowed us to use this, uh, the facility to say a few words. Thank you, Kevin, and hello to everyone. We are so grateful that Christ Church Parish is able to open our doors. Uh, we do it uh, regularly for uh, recovery meetings and always know that this is a part of the community and we see our witness as important. Another piece of important witness that you may not know about is that Living Water Lutheran Church, who shares our buildings, is also present, and their new pastor, Kendall Summers, is here. Many of you haven't met Kendall yet, but if you could say hey to Pastor Kendall. In mid-April, we're going to... the. His, our bishop's coming in, we're going to officially install her, and Living Water will have uh, a new uh, pastor in residence, and we're deeply grateful for that. If you need restrooms, they are out and to the right, uh, and there's a water fountain out there as well, so please do avail yourself, and if you need something, uh, make yourself known to me, and I can help you to find. I'd like to begin this with a prayer, and some of you may know this prayer, and you're welcome to join with me. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. May God bless us in the words that are spoken today. May hearts be turned, and may addiction be broken, and recovery become a sign in Queen Anne's County. Amen. Addiction is, a, is an emotional thing. And um, this morning, when I talked to the congregation here today, I got very emotional because it took me back to 2007 when I was drinking myself to death. But a miracle happened. My wife picked me up off the floor of our living room and took me to Anne Arundel Hospital where they stabilized me. And five days later, I went to Father Martin Ashley, a drug and alcohol rehab. And I was blessed for that because I don't see why she picked me up off the floor and helped me at that point in time because of the abusive alcoholic that I had been for 43 years. So this is something that's dear to our hearts. I'm amazed at the interest of this in this. We had over 30,000 views of that commercial that we put on. Over 20 from the Sheriff's Department, from the posts that we put out there, 5,000. And 65% of the people that watched the post that we put out there watched the whole video, which is phenomenal, 30 seconds long. My grandson, Eric, wanted to participate. And some of you might have seen a commercial on TikTok and all that youth stuff of he and myself right out front. And that had 3,000 views in a week. Dee Dee's homepage of her real estate business had over 2,000 views. So the word is definitely out there. But drug abuse and alcohol abuse is a problem. In 2020, 2020, to 21, there was a 25% increase in deaths due to alcohol in the country. There was a 23% increase in the death, deaths due to addiction. And when I've been talking about that in the last several weeks, 
questions came up from the drug users. And what they asked me is, how many people do you think would have died from drug addiction, from drug use, if it wasn't for Narcan? If you aren't familiar with Narcan, it saves your life when you overdose. So I was at the jail speaking last Tuesday to a group. And I asked them, I said, I don't know if you guys know this, but fentanyl kills. And they kind of laughed. And then I said, there was 104,000 people last year that died in the United States due to, due to drugs. How many do you think would have died if we didn't have Narcan? And there was nervous laughter. And finally, one of them spoke out and said, a million. A million. Now, I don't know if it's a million, but if it's 100,000 without Narcan, is it 200,000? Is it 300,000? Is it 500,000? When is our community, our community understand that we've got to take an action on this? But that's the tip of the iceberg. Every day when you get up and you read about the shootings and the violence that's going on through cartels, drug cartels, drug gangs, large and small, groups, individuals who are all vying for the dollars that 53 million Americans spend on illegal drugs every year. 53 million Americans spend money on illegal drugs every year. 59% of the women in federal penitentiaries are there because their crimes related to drug or alcohol. 46% of the men, drugs or alcohol. If somebody uses drugs under the age of 21, they're five times more likely to be addicted than somebody who starts after that. When I started drinking, it was somewhere around the age of 16 in the early 60s. I'm 74 years old. Now our children are taking their first drink at age 11. 11. Drugs, age 10 and under. And it's easier for our children to get drugs than it is alcohol. We've got to stop the madness. There's a problem with this. It's because addiction and drug and alcohol abuse is a dirty disease. It's a disease of darkness. It's a disease of despair and depression. It's a disease of resentment, anger, rage, hatred. Yeah, when I was in my 43 years of, of alcoholism, I had those. It's a disease of self-loathing, self-hatred, and suicidal thoughts. Suicidal thoughts. Oh, no, yes, me, thinking about suicide. It's a disease where you cut yourself off from your family and friends and find new friends that are walking the same path you are, and you do unimaginable things that you would never have done if you didn't stick a needle in your arm or shoot something up your nose or swallow a pill or smoke whatever you smoke or drink whatever you drink. And every person in recovery will tell you this, that addiction will take you to three places, jails, institution, or death. And that's where we go if we don't get sober and clean. Example of this might be that they're thinking about closing the Witchett Center right now. Our, our government wants to divest themselves of the Witchett Center. I've been going out there for 13 and a half years speaking to people about getting clean and sober, and Maryland's government doesn't want to do it. I understand that our local people, that our elected officials are trying to keep it open, 
But right now, we don't have enough drug and alcohol facilities on the shore, and we don't have enough men mental health facilities on the shore. We need education, we need prevention, and we need treatment for people who are addicted. We don't need to throw their ass in jail. We need to work with them so they can get to be like possibly myself, who is clean. When I went to treatment in 2007, it cost $28,000. $28,000. Our insurance covered 14, and we had to come up with a check for $14,000. Now, I was out of my mind with addiction, so Dee Dee, my wife, who saved my life, had to figure out how we were going to come up with that $14,000. How about the people who can't afford that? We need affordable treatment on the shore.